finding work and accommodation here in Perth WA part two in this video I'm going to share with you some of my biggest mistakes that I've made some of the also valuable lessons that I've learned as well as a big exciting community update towards the end so make sure you stick around it's going to be a good one let's get into it going on everyone and welcome back to yet another video i decided to make a part two of this type of video because i realized recently that i've gone through a lot of different mistakes that i've made and so i wanted to kind of air that out into the world out to you guys so you don't make these mistakes down the line as well if you're new and just joining here, what's going on by the way, my name is Benjamin Hardin, all my friends call me Benny. I put videos on travel and self-development, my progression, my personal experiences, so if that is your kind of vibe, consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. Okay, so time for a little recap. Over the last two months, I have gone through a complete change of not just industry, but job, lifestyle, health and fitness routines, and so much more. And the reason for that was because when I was doing the FIFO, the work completely slowed down. So in order for me to survive in Perth, Western Australia, I needed to find a job to make the money, to pay for the bills, to continue living out here, basically. From my previous video, which I've mentioned in the past, I found a bar job down in my local called the Aluka. I started working there for a couple months, just started as a bartender and then worked my way up to getting promoted to a bar supervisor role in management. The reason why I decided to make the complete pivot and completely change industries is because after working in the bar job for like a few months, I realized the contrast of how different my lives were. For example, okay with FIFO, people know that it can be isolated, it can be it can be dirty work, it could be hard work, and that is fair. It's like I get that. Like depending on what job you're doing, like the what job that I was doing with driller offside and was one of the hardest jobs they say is on the mines. I was applying for jobs and before that I was on behind my laptop and I was pretty lonely. Like I was by myself. I was trying to build the business at the same time, things weren't working, and you know, I just really missed the feeling of community, the feeling of interpersonal relationships and connection, which is, by the way, one of the main reasons to why I moved out here to Australia, because I wanted to see what the communities were like over here. After the first week or two of working in the bar job, I myself even realized kind of how much more energetic, how much more bubbly, how much more social I was. At, that, at the point in time back then, I didn't really notice. I wasn't really conscious of the the isolated and being behind my laptop and that was what it was doing like to me sort of thing. Now I'm two months in in this bar job and I'm fully enjoying it. Applying myself in ways that is self-development progression, that I'm using my skill set. When I moved back into the bar industry, things became a lot more easy, a lot more fluid, a lot more smoother with my ability to socially connect, to build the relationships with the new team down there, to be able to support that team and make them to help them become better in their job and what they're doing. Some have obviously been there for longer than me. They've been there for like two years, which is beautiful, which is amazing. And I learn from them as well and apply my experience and what I've learned in my overseas roles in the eight years of hospitality to help them as well. And in doing that, I felt like I'd got my purpose back. I felt like that I had the ability to help these younger people and these bartenders and these staff and I didn't find that at all like in FIFO. Okay, so I 100% believe investing in yourself, development and your progression because once you obtain that experience, you have evidence, right? You have like a case scenario of what you've actually done and that you can prove to yourself uh, and become confident because you've done that, okay? That is also something that no one can take away from you. When you've got that experience, when you've accumulated that time in the saddle, as people say, then use that to your advantage. Use that to pursue what jobs you wanna chase or what career you wanna follow or progression you wanna achieve. 
One of the reasons, I'm going to completely be honest here, one of the reasons why I went into the FIFO was because I thought that it was my best option to get sponsor because the mining is in such high demand here. But then also the, com the competition for it is also massively high. Like with me being on a 417 subclass visa, which is a work and holiday, I was competing up against Australian citizens, Australian uh, permanent residents, and obviously high paying jobs that like Aussies and other people like are gonna get first pick on. Whereas with a 417 visa and you've only got X amount of months on it, it, the competition is pretty damn hard. That's not to say you can't get a job. Like there are people that have, have done it. One of my friends, Cal, has managed to get a job out there. Another thing that comes into my mind is the consistency. Is like, are you gonna stick to this for the next year or two or for however long you wanna do it? And for me, I I wanna do something where I'm building majority of different attrib attributes. For example, like building a community, building my self-development and progression, building my social skills, building my networking abilities, like and all these things as a, a holistic approach of what I am now working on in my bar job and in my, in my supervisor role. So let's talk about the path trajectory. This may change over time, who knows, but as it currently stands, I've agreed to stay here long term here in Perth, Western Australia to progress in this job and to hopefully go up to higher management somewhere down the line. Uh, this means I have said no to going back to the UK this summer, which I was meant to be going back in August for a wedding and to see my family but postponing that to hopefully next year or to when I'm more comfortable in my visa status here and having a better manager job to come back to. In this current path trajectory, I'm gonna be serving my local community, which is amazing because not only do I do that with my business and my socials online, but doing it in person as well doubles down on the service and doubles down on giving the value and I flip and vibe that I love that a lot so doing that it's going to make me better better at it over time and then that's moving on to finding a potential way for permanent residency in this country like obviously you guys know if you've been watching this channel since 2020 I've been here for the past three years I've done three work and holiday visas I'm currently now on a Nilvac onshore visa work and holiday but I am looking at, at ways for longevity, ways to stay here longer, to stay here permanently, of course. And I'm looking at my options for that. I've reached out to two migration agents at the moment. It's currently in the process. The reason why I'm talking about this here on YouTube now is because I feel that talking about it, it brings it out into fruition. It allows me to develop it. It allows me to, to manifest it as you say, into reality. And no matter how long it takes, I know that I want this and I know that I want to pursue this. So let's try and make it real. Let's try and make it happen in the present, in today's world. One last little note on my current bar supervisor role at job is that, and this is quite funny to say, is that because I was chasing the money in FIFO. I feel that it just didn't really work out because I was trying to push it too much. When I went into the bar job, supervisor role, I was more focusing on speaking through your work. With speaking through your work, instead of focusing on the money, I'm allowed to channel all of my focus and all of my energy into one thing, which is providing value. And in doing that, and not focusing on the money, I've been able to progress more. I've been able to build myself more. And once you build your abilities and your skill levels, then at some point down the line, you can either charge more money or negotiate for more money or a higher paying wage as you progress as well. Full disclaimer, my current wages are on casual at the moment and I am actually, funnily enough, on more money than I was on FIFO. And also because on casual you get paid more for less hours because you don't get the annual or the days in lieu or the sick leave etc so with that i am saving more money i'm saving more money and obviously because i'm not moving and using public transport and uh, having more overheads and expenses then that means i'm also budgeting and saving more money as well one last note with this job and how it's helped me is that i noticed that when i was doing the fifo because my whole mind and heart and everything was set towards I wanted that like 
I, I even had it in my head that I wanted to do FIFO before I came to WA. I was in Northern Territory and I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I'm being stubborn. I'm sticking to that. That is the goal. And I felt so heavily invested in it that if I didn't ha get it, like, I don't want to do anything else. That That's literally what I want. I think that that was a bit of the wrong mentality to take and that path to, to kind of look down. I think that you need to be flexible in these times where you can kind of pivot to what was working or applying to your strengths, realizing what your weaknesses are and putting yourself forward, not being afraid to fail. That's a big thing, not being afraid to fail and move forward, learn the lessons, learn what you can do, and then just do your research and look up all the different ways of how you can become better. And like I've said in previous videos, there's so much information online nowadays that you can use to help you. You've just got to find it. You've just got to get out there and look for it. And that's what I've been doing recently. It's finding all the right, inf this is a big example of the visa that I'm on and trying to find PR is that learning all the different routes that I can potentially take, how I can sort my documents, sort my education, um, apply my skills, education, and all the attributes, experiences that I've got in order to show the WA government that, okay, this is what I can bring to the table. Okay, so let's move on to these big mistakes that I made. The first one, which is not getting out and networking in person. Now, networking in line is okay, it's cool, because obviously you have an access to so many more people, but doing it in person, it allows to kind of generate a stronger rapport, a stronger uh, relationship, you know, and the ability to kind of build on that. This is this is 100% what I saw when I started working in the bar job down the road. It's that even though I was working and I was serving and I was helping the customers there, it was still and a way to talk to people to find out about their jobs. Man, I got two job offers and two references for jobs that I could do here in Perth WA. One was a construction job, one was a mining job. And it's like, it took me forever to look online to find jobs to compete on paper or compete digitally. In person, that is one of my strengths, like the ability to find out about people, to, to take an interest in people, to learn their name, learn their job, how long they've been doing it for, do they enjoy it, what do they get up to in their spare time, their interests. When I do this in my job, down the road, behind the bar, not only does it allow me to make new friends, it allows me to serve and show up properly for the business that I'm working for, and it also allows me to network in a way that I can learn about their experiences through their trial and error. So my tips for this is that if you're looking to try and find work and accommodation in Perth WA, my best my advice here would be to go into the local bars and just have a drink, have a socialize, meet people, find out where, like not in, an, in a smooth way, by the way, not like a dominant overarching, like I want to flip and know this information. Do it on a very cool vibe, nice and easy going and speak to them in a way where you can find out about these experiences. In this social atmosphere, which is expected in the bars and restaurants, bars mostly anyway, it's a lot easier to network than to do it in like parks or do it in local areas where the ability for conversation isn't as expected as you would get in a social atmosphere like a bar. Also, if you socialize in these specific areas, then you're technically going to where potentially your target market or these employers could could be. And word of mouth is like still one of the strongest, most popular forms of promotion and knowing information. Okay, moving on to the next one. One of my other biggest mistakes was applying late. So in terms of a timeline, I arrived to Perth Western Australia back in October 2022, then didn't start properly applying for jobs until December slash January 2023. Uh, the reason for this is because I had a fair bit of savings, uh, which I was using, which was wicked from my Northern Territory job. Obviously, whilst I was here, I was recording videos, I was building bits of the business to seeing if it'd work or not. I realized that that was not the right way around to do it. Instead, I should have been working in a full-time job whilst building the side hustles, building the part-time business, um, brand, etc. Another few things that I've learned about 
through word of mouth is that a lot of people told me that getting a firefighter job would, would be really easy, like a lot of different people. And I think for everyone, their experience can be very different. What they've got in terms of what they can offer for skills, visas, what they have as a tribute, obviously with how they apply and what, how they keep up with the consistency. Personally, I found it very, very hard to even get any callbacks for anything. And that is one of the reasons why I was so focused on that specific one job and trying to do well in it and trying to be become better at it for the driller offside role. But then also I find it as a bit of a blessing in disguise that it didn't work out because now being in the bar job, supervisor role, not only have I gone up to be promoted, and that is also practicing my abilities in management, but then also I'm doubling down on all the experience that I've collected over the years. And then also community, social connection, networking relationships, all of these are being constantly practiced in order for me to become better in what I'm doing. Okay, moving on to the last one. I saved the best one for last because this one is, it resonates with me so much right now. Not buying a car sooner. As you know from previous videos, when I bought my Mitsubishi Challenger back in 2020, 2021, I think it was. Yep, yeah, give or take. When I did the farm work and that, after I got that car, my freedom just exploded. Like the adventures that I could go on, the places that I could see, the people that I could go meet up with. It was just unreal. It was amazing. And the car cost me like like five to six grand at the time. Like it was it was wicked. It was awesome. And when I sold that in the Northern Territory, which I needed to because I, I didn't want to drive all the way down, I should have, in my opinion, kept all the money aside and then bought a new car when I moved to WA in October. The main reason why I didn't do that is because, again, I was so focused on, OK, we're going FIFO. OK, we don't need a car because we're going to fly and be flying in and flying out. We're going to use public transport. It's going to be easier. I'm not going to be back at home enough to need a car. And then obviously all the money got depleted and then I didn't have the savings again. So now I'm here and now I've got the structure of insecurity of the bar job. I'm now saving to build my finances back up again to then save for a car. And the car that I really wanted to get, which I'm going to talk about now because I love bringing it into fruition again, I'm looking at Toyota Hiluxes. I want to get a four wheel drive. Hopefully I can do some amazing travels with that like I did in my Challenger and see some of the beautiful parts of Western Australia. First choice is to go down to Margaret River and down south, see all the places down there. Hopefully this summer, come Aussie summer in December. And then I wanna also do Exmouth and all the north of WA, like the whale shark diving and Cable Beach with the camels as well. I was talking to my friend about that the other day and I'm buzzing for that. This is my motivation. This is what I'm gonna to put towards channeling, saving the money and putting it away so I can get these adventures down and out exploring again. Another great thing about the car, it was a custom backpacker car, so the seats would fall down, I'd pull a piece of wood up, and then I'd inflate a mattress in the back, and I could sleep in there. It's not a luxury van, it had four wheels, it had a safe place to sleep that was long ways that would fit me, and if I did become somewhat not able to afford accommodation, not able to find somewhere to stay or a sofa to sleep on, then this car would serve as the just-in-case backup option. When I came here to Perth WA, I didn't have that. That was taken away. So now moving forward, like if I were to do it all again, I would definitely get the car sooner. And also, this would allow me, if I were to find accommodation, I wouldn't need to rely on public transport to get me to all these different places. And public transport here in WA is great if you're going down the Joondalup line, which is more inland, not the coast. If you're moving around the coast as well, then also it's better beneficial to get a car than getting Ubers and taxis everywhere. A couple of suggestions with this. If you are in the market of trying to find a car here in Australia, then I'd 100% have a look on Facebook Marketplace. This is where I found my Mitsubishi Challenger way back when. I got a pretty good deal with this because the couple that were leaving to go back to Europe, then all I had to do was fix it up a little bit, get a mechanic to have a look at it, uh, make sure I had rego, make sure I had the roadworthy, and then once that's all sweet and all good, yeah, you're putting a bit of money to fix it up, but then you've got a car, you've got 
a potential accommodation to sleep in and you have the freedom and the independence to move around, to do what you want to do, to see your friends, to go to beaches, to do all the great things that you want to see here in Australia. As well as Marketplace, there is Facebook groups um, online which are like cars sold in Australia or Perth area or in different er different places, backpacker cars, Australia, etc. So have a look on them, see what's available, look at the kilometers, look at the condition, look at the previous owners, service history. Just do your due diligence, as you say, to kind of find in something good and just beware that obviously Australia is hardcore terrain. Like people put their backpacker cars through the challenges. And if they've not looked after it, then the last thing you want to do is buy something that looks good, but then doesn't make it 200 meters down the road. And one of my friends recently at work, Jay, his name is, he bought something similar. He bought a Subaru, which was a similar car. Um, it wasn't a backpacker car, but it was a previously owned car. And he had to fork out an extra four grand to fix it, to make it better, because obviously he didn't know about all of this, all of the works that it needed to, to be fixed on it in the garage or in the mechanic shop, etc. Okay, time for a big news update to finish up this video. I have something special to talk to you guys about. Over this whole experience and journey of moving industries and connecting with my local community down the road and down the line, I had a bit of a aha moment, a bit of a, an epiphany which was the SC travel community that I've got online that I originally charged $10 for, for entry. I was like, why am I charging for this? Because I want people to enjoy it for, for the ability to make connections, to build friendships with people in overseas environments. And as I've been giving back to the community in my local here, I wanna be able to do that online as well, but remove the friction of people wanting to try it. Another big thing that I've added to it is I've created over six plus uh, helpful documents. I have uploaded them into the community, which you can go and download. Uh, these are examples of cheat sheets, checklists, itinerary pack and travel checklist, departure travel checklist, planners, travel guides, top tips, mistakes, all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, go over to the community. I'll put the link in the description box below. You can download them for free as well. And you can also meet all of our members in the community as well. And that's all for me today with this episode. Hope you got some value out of this video. If you have, give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe for more travel content coming to this channel and we'll see you all back in the next one. Take care guys. We'll see you later.